Hello boys and girls. How's everybody doing? Welcome to Be The Ant Preparedness. Uh, man, I am just sap today, man. I'm just wore out. I, I, I'll, I'll try to bring it up a little bit for you guys. Uh, anyway, uh, you guys can see from the description, this is about the, uh, the hunting. Uh, very important SHTF skill that you gotta learn now. I can't stress that enough. Uh, but anyway, the first video deals with, my opinion, the most important thing is the safety. And now we're getting into the uh, identification. And for those of you that are like, man, I just want to see you shoot something. Guys, go, go watch the Outdoor Network and you can see them stick deer all day long without learning anything from it. These are things that that you got to know before you even step in the field, okay? I know this is not the sexy, the shooting the boom boom, but uh, this is extremely important. So, covered the safety. Uh, today, identifying your game animal, your areas, season, all that, because it all kind of goes into play. Um, you know, if your game animal is groundhog, it's not going to do you any good to go in a pine forest and look for groundhog, okay? Uh, so you got to know what game animal you're going after. You got to know what type of habitat they like. And uh, that way you know where to go. That way you're not wasting a bunch of time, calories, everything. Now, I understand that in a shtf type event you're probably just going to shoot whatever you see and i get that okay but a lot of these uh habitats overlap okay uh for instance you come across a uh oak ridge an oak patch you know a big patch of oak preferably white oak uh and it's fall kind of like it is now yeah, you're going to have real good luck with squirrel, turkey. I have shot groundhog in the middle of the woods uh, on an oak flat. Uh, yeah, your deer. Uh, just about everything eats acorns uh, this time of year. Now, once again, SHTF, we're not only going to be hunting during hunting seasons, we're going to be hunting all year long. So that same oak flat... Um, that was just loaded up in the fall and now you're out there in the spring, uh, you're not gonna see the same type of numbers of your animals that, you're, that you did in the fall, right? Uh, springtime, uh, I would tend to look for if you've got a patch of uh, maple, okay? Uh, late, uh, late winter, spring, especially when the uh, buds are just starting to come out, uh, the maples, they give off the, the helicopter seed. You guys know what I'm talking about. The wind blows and they spiral down to the ground. Uh, yeah, you're going to see animals eating those things. Okay, you got to find out uh, the animals that you would be hunting in your area. What are their food sources, their bedding areas, all that stuff. Okay, I am eastern woodlands, so I can't speak for... The high desert out in Nevada, Arizona, and all that other good stuff. Okay, um, but uh, you got to identify the animal and the habitat, and know where to find them. Pretty much, you don't want to be wasting a bunch of time. Um, but anyway, during uh, this time of year, I'm hoping that you guys take up hunting now and learn how to do it. That way, you're not learning on the fly. But yeah, this time of year with the acorns dropping, uh, you're gonna be able to find animals of different species and they're all right there and you just kinda gotta hang out, right? Uh, also persimmons, if you guys have persimmons, that's like deer and squirrel, well, everything candy, okay? Whenever you get a hard frost and there are persimmons in your area that you know of, dude, you ought to be hunting those hard. Uh, apple trees go without saying, everything eats them. 
uh, pear trees, anything like that. Identify what's in your neck of the woods. Uh, like for us, uh, a lot of you probably never even heard of pawpaws. They're a fruit, okay? And we have a few different trees at our location. Um, and I just found a new one here about a month ago, which I was pleasantly surprised because they're actually pretty good. But the only problem is every year, <laughs> we can't seem to get any of the pawpaws because the animals all wear them out. Uh, in fact, we've, uh, on our front porch at our camp at, you know, at our property, uh, we found uh, coon droppings that he decided to get up on the porch and uh, in his droppings were the uh, seeds of pawpaws. Uh, so that kind of led us to know that there's pawpaws in that area and come to find out, yeah, there were. And, and that kind of touches on to something else, okay? Uh, you see those animal droppings? Now I'm not saying pick them up in your hands and smush them around, you know, whatever. Take you a stick, investigate the droppings, okay? A lot of times you can see what they've been eating, what, well, what they've eaten. Uh, and it can lead you to uh, to some conclusions. Conclusions. There we go. Uh, that you know, a coon. He's going to venture. I don't know, 100, 200 yard radius. You know, kind of from from that area. And you can start looking in that area. Maybe you got some trees. Like we've had, uh, we've stumbled across pear trees. We didn't even know we had, just all of a sudden, there was a pear tree in the middle of the woods and sweet. So we started taking care of it a little bit. Um, but anyway, uh, say you're going after squirrel, say it's this time of year. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to hunt oak flats, beech, uh, hickory, wear them out, black walnut, any nut producing tree, okay? Except for the buckeye. Buckeye is worthless. Uh, but anyway, any of the other edible nuts, if you guys got chestnut or chickapin, uh, yeah, hunt those things hard this time of year. Uh, fruit trees in your area that are coming in, your apples, your pears, things like that, uh, they're going to be working on those all year long. But right now, all the animals, what are they doing? They're trying to put on fat for winter. So right now, they are eating, eating, eating. So that's why this time of year in the fall, you are hunting the, the food sources pretty good, okay? Uh, winter time, yeah, you're still hunting food sources, but those sources are gonna change because no longer are the nut trees dropping their nuts. Um, the fruit trees have all given out. They're not giving off anything else. Um, you, you gotta know what the animals eat in the winter time, okay? For instance, a lot of people don't realize, but deer, uh, they love uh, green briar. You know, them things you're walking through the woods and they're grabbing a hold of you and cutting you up and stuff like that. Uh, deer absolutely love green briar. They eat poison ivy. I know that sounds weird, but they do. They'll munch it up. Um, multiflora rose, uh, the young pine needles, uh, Things like that, a lot of things that we wouldn't think about. Um, but uh, yeah, try to identify the animal you're going after uh, and what they eat. Coon, if you're going after coon, pretty much they eat whatever is available. Uh, if you've got any type of creeks, streams, ponds, uh, look out around those areas real good for coon. Now, coon, they are active at night. So as far as hunting them in the day, it's kind of tough. I believe I've been hunting for 30 some plus years. And I think there's only been one time when I've seen coon in the woods during daylight hours. Uh, and that was uh, somebody had thrown out a bunch of feed corn, you know, for deer. And of course the coons discovered that and they decided to uh, get an early breakfast. So they were up there munching on that stuff. Big old round balls, man. They were huge. Um, but uh, yeah, identify what, what's in your area. Uh, we talk about area studies for threats, uh, for resources, okay? In your area study, you also need to identify 
uh, the fauna and the flora, the animals and the plants, okay? You need to know what's in the area. You need to know what to look for, what areas you need to kind of mark in your mind uh, that you want to come back and, and check this out. Um, I'll try to run down real quick but by season. That, that might help out. Uh, winter time. Uh, winter time hunting is going to be tough, okay? Your, your fur bearers are probably going to be your easiest ones, okay? Your fur bearers and your predators. Uh, everybody hears that bears hiber hibernate, so I, I can't speak on bear. I've never hunted bear. But uh, coyote are pretty active January, February-ish. Uh, if, if I'm recalling right, that's actually their breeding season. That's also very important to know is breeding seasons of the different animals. That helps you out. Um, but, uh, so they're on the look for a mate and also winter time, they're trying to survive too. So they're trying to find something to eat. Uh, so the coon are going to be a little more, I don't want to say dumber, -er, but yeah, I guess that's the best thing. They're going to be a, a little more dumber, -er, uh, they're going to be a little easier to take care of. You're going to see them out daylight a little bit more but that's going to be early evening really late afternoon uh winter time you'll see some squirrel okay uh but they're going to be out really like the nice days in the winter time that's when you're they're going to venture out they're going to go look for their uh different caches that they've made or caches however you want to say it um birds okay you can still find some turkey uh and yeah we're probably uh, a lot of people are going to be relegated to eating whatever they can find man blue jay pigeon dove dove's good by the way um but anything they can find but winter time's going to be tough that's uh that's more when i'm looking to be trapping okay really more than hunting uh because i can set out a dozen two dozen however many traps i want to and then just uh, once a day I can go and check my trap line and that way I'm not sitting out in the cold for hours hoping something comes by. So as far as winter, uh, I'm, I'm thinking you're probably going to want to be trapping more than hunting, but you got to do what you got to do. If you don't know how to trap, you better learn how to do some hunting. Um, yeah, winter time at least, and, I, and I'm talking like parts of the country that has four seasons okay uh, or two seasons in some part they got winter and summer and that's it uh yeah winter time is going to be rough for them if you're down southern part of the country southeast you know florida georgia stuff like that won't be as bad uh, but you still got to watch uh springtime uh, things are going to be moving a little bit more. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna see the animals out eating the uh, the fresh buds, the first uh, uh, grasses coming up. They're going to be going crazy on that stuff. Pretty much whatever starts coming out first, that's where you're going to want to be hunting at as far as food. To touch on something in the spring, and this is all going to be your choice. Um, Let's say you're out in the spring and you guys are getting dangerously low on food. You got to try to find something. And all of a sudden, a doe and her two fawns roll up on you. Just know that if you shoot that doe, those fawns are just going to go die. Okay. So you've pretty much, by pulling that trigger, you've killed three deer. Now, if you're dangerously low on food to the point where your family may end up starving, you do what you got to do. But if you're looking to uh, maintain for future, okay, maybe you guys will get hungry again here uh, six months and those fawns are now yearlings and they got a little bit more meat on them. Uh, but, but that's going to be a... Uh, that's going to be a choice you're going to have to make at that time. It's going to depend on your situation and everything. But just know that you shoot that doe with that with those babies, yeah, they're they're not going to make it. Um, what else? So springtime, you look for the new growth. Uh, pay attention to that stuff. 
uh, turkey. That is kind of their breeding season. Uh, April, May-ish, uh, that's when turkey uh, are uh, in rut, whatever you want to call it, their breeding season. Uh, that's when uh, old Mr. Gobbler, he gets a little dumber, right? I mean, think about it, guys. If you guys can only do it like once a year, yeah, there probably wouldn't be anything else on your brains either. Um, but, uh, but yeah, April, May, turkey, you're, they're going to be out there making all kinds of noise. You're going to be able to locate them. Uh, and either, now this is not, this is for SHTF. This is not for <laughs> hunting now. Uh, most states require that you only hunt turkey up until noon, one o'clock during the spring gobbler season. Okay, that's because they are needing time to let the birds do what they do and everything, okay? Um, now, if you're in a SHTF event, in the evening, if you can find where the turkeys have roosted at, okay, because they, in the evening, they fly up in a tree and they sleep there. They roost there, just, just like chickens and stuff like that. Um, now... <laughs> knowing where they've roosted at, they're going to be there all night long. So something that only an SHTF event, this is way illegal, but if you guys are needing food and you know where some turkey have roosted at, uh, 22 and a spotlight and you can put some food down, okay? Uh, hunters nowadays, and once again, I'm not a big turkey hunter, so I'm not going to say a whole lot to it, but I know that uh, buddies of mine, if they can locate where they're roosting the night before, uh, they make sure they go out and are in the area uh, before the sun comes up, and as those birds come off their roost, they try calling them in. Uh, it is illegal in the states that, that I've hunted in. You cannot shoot a turkey off a roost or while in flight, okay? So they're not going out there and shooting the birds off the roost, but they're setting up 100 yards away, something to where their calls can still be still be heard. Uh, so late spring, yeah, look for that stuff. Uh, summertime, summertime, it's going to be it's going to be weird, okay? Because there's going to be ample food um, for the most part. If you're talking, you know, your animals, they're eating the grasses, like I said, green briars everything okay with that it's going to be identifying more instead of focusing on food as much because food's going to be pretty much everywhere you're going to be wanting to look at where do they tend to hang out at okay their bedding areas their things like that and just know that deer they are actually nocturnal okay yeah we see them out in the day but they are most active at night. So when you're talking about their bedding area, if you are looking to hunt their bedding area, you don't want to go there at noon because they're already going to be there and you're going to jump them out. Um, so early, early hunt uh, transition zone in between the bedding and the feeding and wait for them to come back. Uh, but I think that's pretty much going to be your, your best bet. Uh, summertime, if you're talking about areas that get very dry i know our area that pretty much every august beginning of september um yeah like it doesn't rain for like a month and a half okay water that's what you're going to want to hunt okay so there are bedding areas and their water foods everywhere now so that's not going to be a big challenge for them but in some parts of the country water is going to be a challenge um I, I've seen the guys, you know, hunting the antelope uh, out west, and that's what they're pretty much hunting. They've uh, set up these pond irrigation dishes, whatever they call them. Pretty much they hold water, and they just set up on those things and wait for them to come in because everything needs water, right? So summertime, you're looking at that, those water sources. Now, once again, you're getting into fall and you're going to want to hit those limited food sources because like I said a little bit ago, those animals are trying to put on fat for the winter 
and that is what they're doing is eating, 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 and that that's all that's on their mind. Until about November rolls around, um, and that's when your deer go into rut. Now I can't speak for elk and moose and all that. I'm talking about the white-tailed deer. Uh, that's when they go into rut, and once again, that's when the uh, bucks get dumber, right? Uh, and once again, if you only had one shot a year for a week or two, yeah, that'd be all you'd be thinking about too. Uh, so with, uh, with that, if you're talking SHTF, you're really not looking for a wall hanger at that point in time. You're just looking for meat. Uh, you're going to be looking at the food sources, but it's going to be to your advantage because now during the day, you're going to see a lot more activity. Uh, during that rut and you're gonna have to check your area to find out when the rut is um, It kind of varies a little bit from year to year by a few days a week and also as far as uh, uh, Latitude, okay Southern part of the country it happens later northern part of the country. It happens a little bit earlier um, I'm not a wildlife biologist, so I'm not going to try to explain why as is just what it is okay um but anyway yeah during that that breeding phase the rut uh those bucks are going to be hunting does like crazy and what they're going to be doing is the does are going to be trying to get away from them horny guys right uh so even the does are going to be more active during the day that's why if you've uh if you've ever noticed uh you see the uh deer hit by vehicles on the side of the road it goes up a ton late october to mid to late november okay because they're out there they're the bucks are pushing the does the does are trying to get away from the bucks the bucks are trying to find the does and they're just moving all the time um yeah get those food sources watch for them um what else what else yeah, I think as far as fall, that's that's really what I'm looking at is those food sources. Um, and as far as hunting, okay, uh, we're all going to be planting gardens if something happens, right? If something bad happens, everybody's going to have a garden. Uh, you can have somebody hunting your garden, okay? Because number one, the critters are going to come in to try to steal your food. And somebody's going to have to try to get them out of there. Why not use that garden as your own little food plot? Let them come in, do what you got to do. Now you got some meat as well. That's why gardening is hugely important. Uh, I, like I said, I know it's not sexy. It's not the gear. It's not the uh, chest rigs and all that other stuff. But dude, garden is not only going to provide you vegetables, but if you got somebody on overwatch on it, it's going to provide you meat as well. And that is from the time that you put the seeds in the ground until you yank everything out it is going to it's going to bring animals in that's why hunters we plant food plots that's why we plant fruit trees and all this other stuff is to bring them in um but uh all right we're, we're getting a little long in the tooth here but i think that'll pretty much wrap it up so just identifying what you're going after the habitat and of course i cannot sit here and break down region by region, state by state. You guys are gonna have to whatever area that you're living in. Uh, we do have viewers overseas. Welcome guys, uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, so they're gonna have to identify the animals in their area, the uh, their habits, what they do when they eat, their breeding seasons, uh, all, that, all that comes into play. Uh, it, yeah, if you talk to hunters that are you know, pretty much every year they, they get a decent deer. They probably know what they're talking about when it comes to, to the animal. You got to study. You got to know what you're doing. But uh, but anyway, as always, please do the like, share, subscribe thing. Uh, any comments or questions, please post them down below. Uh, all of my videos, I also, uh, in the description, I leave a uh, email that if anybody has any questions they can they can email us here and uh we will do our best to get back to you as quickly as possible uh but uh yeah hunting identifying uh game habitat season 
all important stuff, knowing, knowing what you're going after. So thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it, and we'll talk to you after a while.